What is going on, everyone? Thank you guys for joining the channel. This is Keo Daiken. In today's video, we're going to be discussing what's going on with RetroPie accessories and the community service or customer service that is given to the community due to issues or things beyond our control. And so I've invited a couple of guests with me tonight. Uh, we have uh, Santino, who's also going to be joining us. He's an arcade modder. And then also Greg from 99 Lives Arcade. Now, the purpose of this video is to give you guys some more insight as to what typically goes on right now within the retro gaming community. But what's happening is a lot of us, as you guys have heard my mantra here in the past uh, few days or whatnot, uh, We've been talking about the community pretty much providing 98, maybe 99.9% .9 of all customer service for additional third-party dealers and people who sell uh, accessories for the most part. And what happens is a lot of times people think it's the image or the build. And uh, of course, they reach out to other image makers and devs saying, hey, your image is broken or uh, it's it's faulty. So you end up spending a lot of wheels trying to pinpoint exactly what's going on. And so uh, I want to show you guys a passage or a situation that happened just a few days ago. And this is one of the reasons why I invited our current guest on today, uh, because they've gone through the same thing. So uh, let me go ahead and pull up my camera for you guys. Uh, and this is coming from Arcade 1UP Modding. Uh, someone posted a comment saying, update. Shout out to a special shout out to RK One Up Mod Pro Ray Santiago for helping me with this project. I have upgraded the joysticks, added LED buttons and speakers, along with my Raspberry Pi 4 to my RK One Up. I have tried several images by Demonso Retro Dreams and Retro Ultra. Each game gives me a joystick filled error message once the emulation station finishes, causing me to have to reboot after unplugging the USB encoders after emulation. Uh, station loads uh, and does not crash, I can replug the USB encoder and play games for a while before the system crashes again. I am totally new to the game uh, game modding and have figured things out so far by YouTube. And this form and Ray, I have deleted the save controller settings several times in RetroPie and reconfigured. I have also checked the wiring on the USB encoders. Any suggestions would be helpful. And so, as you can see, this is one of the issues that typically has been going on um, with a lot of people. And I've done a video on this. And one particular way this could happen is if you don't have enough GPU settings on the Pi. But as you can see, and this is obviously no fault or responsibility on the person using it because, you know, this is a situation where you just truly don't know. But let's read a few of the comments here and we'll see exactly uh, what we're going at just to give you guys a little bit more context of the situation. So Damaso chimes in, an updated version of Nostalgia Dreams with bug fixes will be released at some point tomorrow. Damaso probably thought it was his image. And then, of course, some other people uh, says, it looks like the image is bad. You are using a pre-compiled pre image. Again, obviously, a lot of times people will automatically assume that it's the image. But as we scroll down further, one of our guests, Santino, uh, comments, it's the encoder. So even the newer Supreme Bills have the same issue with these EG Start uh, encoders. And then the original poster, Antar Johnson says, I'm going to pick up some new encoders tomorrow. Uh, and Brian DeMasso, I will look forward to uploading your latest version of Nostalgia. Thanks. Uh, then down here, Santino comments again, me and Gregory went through this, and it's because they are bad encoders. I went through about 30, and he went through about 15 to 20. So you have a community member now spending, uh, I'm not sure how much money, but uh, they bought 50 different units to test. This is some of the stuff that we do, some of the stuff that I do here on the channel to find out what's compatible. Uh, EG Star encoders, before we figured out those encoders are bad. Uh, 99 Lives Arcade says, get easy brand, having no issues with those EG Starts are defective. And then, of course, these are... Uh, their comments, these are mine. And then someone else comments, it's the encoders. I had the same problem, and Sentito Kempis uh, sent me new ones after I installed them. It booted right up. Never had that issue again. And then just a quick follow-up. This, uh, this is another issue that has happened with RetroPie. But as you can see, this particular issue is caused by a TV. Uh, the gentleman here said, it's sorted now last year's. It was my bloody new TV. 
And the image that he was using for this was uh, my Pistolero image. So uh, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring the guest on right now. I want to thank both of them for joining. And hi, right, gentlemen. How are you guys doing tonight? How are you? Doing good. How about you? Good. Uh, so, yeah, I was just reading off some of the issues that have been have you know having. In fact, my first video of this year started off with the Nest PKs and then a couple of other devices, just in how they uh, integrate with RetroPie, so to speak, or Retro Gaming. And then a lot of times it's not the image or the build, but you guys are seeing it. Um, you know, you guys are seeing it. You guys are offering customer service freely to the community, like we always do. But you're noticing that third-party hardware is causing issues with either images, builds, whatever it may be, even on PC. And uh, you're having to go through almost 50 devices just to find out they're defective. And so can you guys speak on that a little bit, some of your circumstances? Sure. Um, I think I ran into the issue first. I mentioned it to Santino because uh, he shared an image with me that I want to try and use. Mm -hmm. Um and then I booted it up one day, and I got a video of Gandalf from Lord of the Rings and Bob and his head to some corny music. <laughs> like, what right. is, I thought he was playing a prank on me, so I messaged him. I'm like, hey, thanks for the, the little video, man. That was hilarious. How do I get it out of here? <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't know anything about it. He didn't know what Gandalf was. He's like, what is this? Uh, and from there, it was just I didn't realize how serious the problem was. Um, I started ordering more and more mod kits, the four-player mod kits to test them. And they were all EG starts because that's typically what I would use. Uh, they're right. just the most that are, you know, they have the most supply and it's easier to get them. Um, I didn't realize there was an issue with those specifically. Uh, I tried a bunch of different kits and they kept getting the same issue. So I thought it was the image. We flashed a new image. Mm -hmm. um, and it just kept happening. So finally I grabbed, I, I've got an arcade that I built myself and I grabbed the control panel off it because it just pops off. I don't have it screwed in. I, Hook that up to the pie and it fired right up. Right. And not to cut you off, what size image was that? I think it was a 128. Okay. That's not too bad. So just imagine, guys, if he was using a slower SD card and it was a one terabyte or 500 gigabyte Oof. image. No, thank so, you. So, yeah. So you guys start to see the picture that we're painting. So, so go on. All right. So this other control panel has sandwall controls in it, sandwall buttons, uh, I, or IL buttons, sandwall joysticks. There was nothing LED. It was just the chrome buttons. So I hooked mm -hmm. that up and I fired it right up and I was like, what the hell is this? So I plugged in the, the four player panel back in, you know, turn it off, plugged in the four player panel with the EG starts and it went right back to that video a couple more times. You know, I did this a few times. Yeah. Um, but after a few times, the video went away and it just went to emulation station crash. It wouldn't even fire up a, it got halfway through the video, the intro video that was built for the Pi. Okay. And then it would start playing the music from the Gandalf video. And then from there on, I just started getting that crash message. And I got no video, no sound. It was tormenting me for about three straight days before I started to kind of figure out what was going on. Um, oh, okay. So once I plugged in that control panel and it worked, I didn't get it right away. I wasn't like, oh, it's the, it's the encoders. Uh, they kept trying different mod kits, switching out buttons. And we spent hours and hours and uh, over days, maybe weeks, trying different, you know, changing parts out and things like that. And then I plugged in a USB Super Nintendo cheap controller and it fired right up. Then I plugged in the four player panel back and it didn't fire up. Then I brought back my sandwall controls, put it in and it fired up. And so I kept the cycle going. And I finally realized that the EG starts encoders were flashing when I fired up the Pi. They're supposed mm -hmm. to blink once, maybe twice, but this was flashing like a turn signal, nonstop. Did those uh, ever work for PC? Did you try it on that? I did. They won't work for PC. I tried um, Odroid. It won't work for that either. Pi 3, Pi 4. None and of them work. Does this company have a disclaimer that they would probably only work on certain systems or any? No, nothing like uh, that. Nothing like that. There's no disclaimer at all, but... Uh, yeah, I try. I, I ordered an old droid, set up an image for it, fired it up. It fired right up with the sandwalk controls, and I brought it to the crappy controls, the EG starts, and it same thing happened. So I tried it in the Pi 3, same thing happened. Um, I didn't try it on a PC. I do have a couple PC arcades, and I was afraid to try that, thinking I might mess something up on those, and I don't want to deal with that. Right. So. And to mention as well, I actually um, obviously went through pretty much the same thing as Greg, 
And I did end up trying it on a PC. Um, didn't really cause a crash, but it didn't pick up. And, right. um, you know, I've got a full size cabinet that has an iPad in it. So I was like, OK, let me go ahead and try. I've got, you know, Suzo Hap uh, joysticks and buttons in there. Plugged it up and just no response at all. And my initial thought was, let me make sure that, you know, I, I got encoders for a Pi or for Windows, you know, so I did actually go in and check um, to make sure in the description it actually showed that. And I was really surprised because it showed on there, you know, obviously Windows, uh, Linux, Pi, um, specifically Raspberry Pi. And right. I went through, you know, same situation. I mean, I connected oh, probably <laughs> I, I went through 30 encoders. Um, and I've actually got like four Ziploc bags just full of them. And I mean, it was yes, driving me. Back. No, so not, and I haven't yet. I'm going to. Um, but I honestly yeah. wanted to see too. I figured, you know, let me try to see if there's some type of a, a way I can update the firmware or something like that in hopes that it would work. And I tried everything. I mean, I followed through with e even what EG Start says you're supposed to do if you have a new image, which you know, on my end, I mean, hell, even my Pi 4B that's in my test cabinet, um, it's an original Pi 4 from, oh, I say, January of last year when they first, you know, hit the market. And then I tried it on newer Pi 4s. Um, I, I tried everything. I tried old images, new images. I tried small images from 32 gigs up to my 512. Um, I mean, everything. And you talk about racking your brain. And I actually called <laughs> Greg. And the funny thing was that after, you know, we had the conversation, then I called him back and I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm going through the same thing. And, you know, it definitely makes you crazy because it's one of those things where you're just like, how hard can this be? You know, <laughs> not not rocket science. <laughs> right. Of course. Uh, yeah, We got a comment here from Mystery Coder. He says they're Chinese boards. You expect them to support them? No, but I expect Amazon to take them back when I return them. So. Oh, yeah. definitely. Well, and, and and that's more or less my point. You know, my point is that, you know, I don't care whether or not. OK, like we're hobbyists, like, you know, where we're making images, bills. You know, this is something we do for fun. We put it out there. We do, no, our I do it for a living. But you know what? It is a hobby for me, too. Yeah, we do this for fun. But yet you have a company or entity selling something. You would think that they would at least either put a disclaimer or test it with other images or PC tested with coin ops, uh, some type of initial troubleshooting troubleshooting prior to it going to the market. Now, mm -hmm. I don't personally care. I mean, one way or the other. The only reason why I care is because you have a number of people who end up having to re-download images, bills, say an image is broken, and, you know, they'll say, hey, Keo, your image is broken or messed up, whatever the case might be. And then, you know, we put something out there for free, and then they're asking us about something, and the entity that's making uh, this is their living, this is their business, uh, we're taking care of all their customer service and explaining things to everybody on their you know behalf and they're profiting from it us over here we're just kicking back just you know having fun and this is a hobby so i just believe that if anybody out. right 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 mm -hmm. of course you know like you know you know greg he called me a few weeks ago you know we were talking about some things all that kind of stuff is cool i'm just talking about transparency and doing your due diligence if you're selling a product to make sure that it's not going to blow something up yeah. fry something else some type of initial quality assurance when people are spending their money. I don't care if they're from Antarctica, Mars, Venus, whatever they're from. Some some type of assurance, quality assurance uh, should be taken into account. Test it with an image. I'm sure they know what RetroPie is. How many images has it worked on? Bills, you know, just some the stuff that you guys, you know, you guys have said you do, and the stuff that I do. Yeah, at least I mean, a basic run through. Yeah, something changed though. I mean, EG starts was fine, and all of a sudden one day we had that issue. Um, right. Right about when they started mentioning a shortage of, of chips and things like that. So I don't know if they're trying to replace parts with different parts, but mm -hmm. not testing them. I mean, it, it didn't work on anything. I don't know how they could miss that. And yeah, it, and even to mention as well that you know, and I understand like the chip shortage, right? That it causes problems. But uh, on my end, I order a lot of items from Japan. 
And, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I try to avoid a, a majority of the Chinese stuff. But when it starts to affect American products and it starts to affect yep. Japanese products, there's a bigger mm -hmm. issue going on, you know? Right. Yeah, of course. Ah, Joel showed yeah. up. Yeah, what's going on, Retro Lizard? But yeah, you know that's my you know main concern. In um, it's it's get it's getting really bad. It's gotten bad since summer of last year. You know when we started having all the EEPROM updates, the USB thing, and going through different storage drives, and some would boot with RetroPie, a lot of them wouldn't. You know I understand all that because SD cards are USB drives and stuff like that, but. Uh, that Nespy case, man, you know, it, <laughs> if you guys only knew because no, I never touched I, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, here's a pro you have a, a device is um, obviously you could boot or use a SATA drive with it. It was cool. You know, it's cool. It's like, man, I want to boot from this. Come to find out there was probably two drives at the time that it would only boot from two. And mm. so some of the members of the Supreme team and even RK punks mess it. We, you know, we were messing each other back and forth and we said, okay, we need to find every drive and then add it to the boot code to prevent the problem. Now, you know how many drives that is <laughs> not just specific companies, but specific companies of different file types. Cause I went out and bought some PNY drives. The 256 would boot and the 128 wouldn't. So mm -hmm. imagine going out trying to buy as many USB drives or SATA drives as you possibly could to add the specific boot code in there to get it to work just because they had a faulty cable or whatever the issue might be. And there's no customer service for it. And everybody's saying this image is broken. It's, it's, it, it's the image maker is their fault, whatever. And I think a lot of people message retro flag, you know, we like their products and stuff, but was it tested, you know, prior to, you know, I'm a tester. I mean, I'm sure you guys are too, but we spent a lot of time trying to make sure things are working before we tell somebody, yeah, this is okay. Mm -hmm. And here we are trying to fix these issues, you know, and address them. So very true. I mean, I get a lot of questions about other people's products and I don't mind helping because I just care about the hobby and I want the people to enjoy it. Um, but it does feel a little unfair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's rough. I remember one time I was on the phone with somebody for three hours back oh, in wow. 2018. Yeah, I was on the phone sure. with the guy for three hours. You know, the guy wasn't even a subscriber or anything. When you know, I didn't get anything out of it, but a lot of it had to do with button configuration and things like that. So again, I'm just pointing out the things people in the community go through to make sure something is working. But yet, uh, some of these companies don't have a face within their own market to provide tech support for some of the own products they provide. True. Agreed. And, and even to mention as well, you have, you know, one major store nationwide where a lot of people end up, you know, getting these products from. And, and the downside to that is too, that even at that store, if you try to ask them a question or somebody inquires about something, mm -hmm. they really don't even have any answers, you know, because Pi themselves is it, obviously it's big. But, you know, the support end of that is so small. And I end up even sitting inside the store talking to people and answering more questions than what the people can do <laughs> who work there, <laughs> you know? Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely true. But like I said, it. I mean, I know this was going on even before I started making a lot of retro pie videos and stuff. I mean, but you didn't. I mean, I think ever since RK went up, came on the scene, you had more modders and people starting their own businesses and stuff. Uh, then, of course, you see more uh, companies selling on Amazon. Uh, it for me, I didn't really see it becoming an issue until last summer. You know, around that time. And actually, as you say that too, Keo, to mention last summer, I started to see a lot of the. Uh, pies hitting the market that were freezing up and mm. still to this day I, I don't even know whatever caused that but it kind of came and went you know but there was a a, a long period I, I would say a good month to maybe six weeks where I was picking up pies that literally as soon as I plugged them up put a card in within 10-15 seconds they'd freeze up and I mean that's as far as they would go right yeah last year was a very trivial time because you had <laughs> Uh, all of those accessories come out. You had that USB input 
or the USB boot capability with the Pi 4. And then, of course, you had the Pi 4. Then you had the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model, which had a different architecture. A lot of people thought it would be the same just because it had the same amount of memory. But uh, then, of course, you had the EEPROM update. So, but with the Raspberry Pi 3 going to the 3B Plus, it was just a transition of whether something would boot on the 3 versus the 3B Plus. But you had one specific unit, whereas now, you had, uh, and I made a video about this, about it pretty much becoming impossible to troubleshoot RetroPie because you got all these different variables, and then now you start factoring in TVs, you know, and accessories. But um, yeah, I started seeing it last year. You had all these different EEPROM updates, then come to find out there's multiple EEPROM updates. Even if you download them in the same month, you can download it uh, one the previous day and then the next day and pull up different EEPROM updates, so, and then different Pi models. So you just had all these different variables. So uh, it's, it's becoming tough out there. And I remember that the whole EEPROM thing, it was amazing to me because I, I remember obviously updating one and then coming to find out that obviously there was multiple versions of it. And, oh man, you talk about, you know, your head exploding and trying to catch up with the curve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like what Mystery Coder is talking about, like you even had uh, two Pi 4, well, now you have three Pi 4 models. You had the original Pi 4, you had the, what that, then you had the USB C fix. You had that one. Oh, yeah. And then now you have uh, the new one that I have I picked up a couple of weeks at Micro Center that has the newer chip on there. So out of that same Pi 4 model, you now have three different ones. Oh, and then, yeah, on, of impossible. course, you have the, yeah, then you have the Pi 400. And then you yeah. also have the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model and the 2 gigabyte model. And some people say there's performance differences between the 2 and the 4. But again, we don't honestly know. We know it has a different different memory on there, possibly different performance. We don't know. But it's another unit that you still have to mm -hmm. troubleshoot and kind of treat it differently. Agreed. Because even the, the 2 gigabyte and compared to the 4 gigabyte, I mean, you don't see much of a difference. But, you know, between the three, the architecture on all three of them is completely different. And you can you can notice that when you're putting in the same image into those three different pies. You know, yep. it's not a huge difference, but you can definitely notice something is different between the three pies. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I've had several people tell me that between the Pi, uh, two, well, the Pi 4, two gigabyte model and the Pi 4. I I'm I can't tell you because I didn't waste my any, any of my time with the two gigabyte model. No, I never touched it. Right. I tried it whenever uh kind of the shortage started to hit. I was like, okay, well, the only thing I can find, <laughs> let me go ahead and just it's grab it. available. <laughs> yeah. So, it worked out well while I could find them. <laughs> Definitely. Uh well, Greg, tell us a little bit about your company, what you're seeing over there. I mean, what some of your customers like and uh what they don't like, some of the issues that they've really encountered and what you've had to troubleshoot. I don't really have a lot of issues because, I mean, I fully test everything before I send it out. So if the issues happen, they happen here and they don't go to anybody. Mm. Um, their issues are very minor. Uh, um, it's like uh, my favorites list isn't saving. I'm dealing with that right now, trying to figure out a solution. It's probably some simple memory solution. Um, sometimes people just have the wrong TV and it doesn't work with the Pi. I'm assuming it's a massive 70-inch TV and the Pi just isn't built to power that. I don't know. Um other than that, I really haven't had many issues. We're having a minor trackball issue right now we're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably just maybe the ROMs we have just aren't mouse compatible, but I'm not sure. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, we really don't have issues. We do and, find is, it here. and is that trackball being used with uh, Pi or is it used with PC? Pi 4. Pi 4, okay. Yeah. 4 gigabyte model. It's all I use. And uh, Santino, tell us about your company and some of the issues or customers that you've uh, assisted. Yeah. So, um, you know, really same thing with Greg, you know, test all of our products before they go out. So we really haven't encountered too much here. I mean, outside of the encoders and, you know, some trackball issues here and there where I could have, you know, two of the same trackballs. One will work perfect. One doesn't work. Um, some issues like that, which has come up lately. Um, but even outside of that, I, I deal with a lot of customers from um, uh, who buy from another company and they really don't get much support. So I, I kind of end up heading that. I mean, for instance, uh, within the last week, I've had three that have reached out to me um, who've had some problems like LCD boards, um, converter boards not working, um, not getting a picture, uh, images just not rotated properly. 
um, you know, small things like that. But overall, um, for any of my products that go out the door, I mean, everything is tested from A to Z. I mean, I, I pretty much test everything from, you know, low RAM consumption all the way through to high RAM uh, consumption, um, you know, but I, I see a lot more online. I, I'm also in a couple of Reddit groups, um, you know, so I see things coming out where people have just had, you know, major issues with, you know, games not working uh, properly, um, you know, with controls, things like that. Um, but nothing, I'll, I say outside of the norm, right? For me, that seems to be the norm um, coming from this other company, unfortunately, you know, where they don't get that support. So I, I've tried to fill that gap. And, you know, I try to be as helpful as possible. I mean, I even have people who I've talked to for an hour, hour and a half, just walking them through configurations, um, how to do this, how to do that. And I've even had people where I've sent them a, a copy of my instructions um, that I give out, you know, on how to configure things, quick little tips and kind of hints and tricks, you know, to help people out as well. Right. Uh, let me ask you, what's been the turnaround time on those encoders? You buy them on Amazon. How long does it take to get to you and then you ship them back? Typically, I was going to say I, I can get anything like, well, luckily, I live in the, the fourth largest city, so I can usually get everything the same day, um, if not the next day. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Yeah, mine's like two weeks. Um, two, yeah. I'm actually waiting a month right now because I can't use EG starts. So I'm waiting for a different wow. brand to show up, but I got to wait another four weeks before it arrives. Yeah, see, and everyone keep in mind, too, you know, again, we're not just talking about the customer service. Most of this stuff is bought on Amazon or eBay. So imagine you buy something that doesn't work. You have to ship it back. Um, can't remember how Amazon usually works with uh, if something's coming from China. I'm not, I know sometimes it's coming directly from China or they may just have it in the warehouse. But primarily, you have that downtime. It's not like you're running into around the corner into a brick right. and mortar store picking it up. You have your days you know a week two weeks several days um and then of course it's different if you're paying for amazon prime or if you don't have amazon prime but uh again we're not dealing with let me make a trip around the corner to radio shack grab something and radio you know and, and fix my, <laughs> no, yeah, my fix my project and i do miss radio shack by the way <laughs> <laughs> a lost gem of a store man yeah, I don't know how big of a problem this is going to become because I think everybody's kind of redirected themselves to a different brand and we might be all using the same brand now because it's the only thing that works. Um, oh, yeah. At least at the low price items. If I go, I, I do offer the Suzo Hap LED and, you know, regular hat buttons and things like that. And those I don't have any issues with. Um, right. But they, there's more cost with those. Right. Yeah, Mr. Co uh, Mystery Coder. Um, yeah, it's, um, you know, I think the more it less issue is not so much about having to buy it on Amazon and whether they take it back or not, but you're just down those additional days, one day, two oh, days, yeah. Yeah. you know, three days, or you can't complete a project. I mean, I, that's the only reason why I hate buying anything on Amazon or eBay when I want something instantly and want to work, because if it's not going to, then I got to spend time and money shipping it back. Whereas if I had a micro center around the corner from me, then, you know, for these, this is a very niche market. It's not like you just have this stuff at Walmart or whatever. So I can't uh, get it anywhere locally. No, I have to order everything online. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There's, there's nothing near me. And to mention as well, you know, even as you said, Keo, with, you know, not being able to go around the corner, micro center was great up until four months ago, because at least the one in Houston now carries nothing where before, you know, I could get encoders from them. And they, I say they, they were definitely a, a different brand of encoders. Um, but right. there was things that I could actually pick up locally if I needed, um, you know, Suzo Hap joysticks, buttons, um, IL products, anything like that, I could, you know, run down there and grab it. And then now right. it's all gone. I mean, hell, even the pie aisle, completely empty the only thing that they've got there is you know a couple cases power supplies and that's really it like they haven't had pies in two to three months easily oh wow yeah and that's you know definitely a struggle and especially for myself i, I order quite a bit from japan um but even then you know that puts me in a situation where i mean i constantly have shipments coming in i mean almost every day i've got you know packages coming in but it really sucks because you know i miss those days of just simplicity when you could pick up stuff locally and if you had a problem you always had a face you know that you could talk to a voice to voice you know person oh okay yeah yeah so worst case scenario 
somebody gets something, you know, they download, let's say, a one terabyte image that probably took them five days, whatever the case might be, takes them another several hours to burn it. They get their accessory, you know, they shop online. That's another two or three days that they got to wait, maybe four. Then they get it, and then, oh, the image is broken automatically, just like that. And then <laughs> the image you get on. <laughs> yeah, it's the image is nothing else. <laughs> and then you go on the groups, you know, you're chatting with everybody else. Everybody's trying to pitch in information, you know, taking time out of their projects, you know, in a nice, nice manner. Then some people say the image is broken. You have to download it again, erase it, start all over again. Then you find out it's the encoder weeks later or days later. And then by that time, your return policy probably almost expired because it can't be the image. I mean, it can't be the, uh, the, the device. It has to be uh, the image or the bill. It has to be. And then, you know, you go through three or four of those, you know, you try another image because there's no possible way that you could have bought a second encoder or it could be the TV. There's no way. So you try a third image. <laughs> so you guys see how how this continues to go on and on and on. Yeah. Because possibly the manufacturer couldn't have tested things on their end. But since they're the ones selling it, I mean, my personal take on that is they should be they're the ones accountable. Because it's their business if they're selling something. Well, even miserable. too to, to think that you know a lot of people that I see in these groups, you know, they'll even say, oh, "I'm going to PC," and you know, it, it definitely I, I can understand the frustration, you know, especially from our end because we see it from both a you know a company perspective, but also an individual perspective. Um, because when and I'm sure Greg, you're the same way as me in this sense that. You know, if I have anything that is defective or causing a problem, not only is it a headache for me as a you know a business professional, but as an individual, because then I sit there and think too, well, my God, am I going to continue going through this? Is you know, are my customers going to have this? And then, moreover, you think about other people's customers, just because you know we are hobbyists, we love this, we love what we do, and it it becomes so intense, and you fall into the rabbit hole. And, you know, I hate to see people saying, too, that, you know, oh, I'm going to switch over to PC because pie is horrible. But at the end of the day, you know, people don't really have enough knowledge on what's going on. They don't understand. I mean, I, I see people always, you know, chiming in on the group saying, oh, it's not due to a chip shortage. Well, I mean, in actuality, there's a major shortage going on. And, you know, a lot of people don't see it. They just think that, oh, yeah, like you say, you know, the image maker, it's the, you know, the pie itself or, or the image. It can't be anything else. It would never be an encoder and it would never be buttons. Mm -hmm. I've honestly never had an image that caused me any kind of major issues at all. I mean, most of the issues were just programming of controls or, you know, the ROM needed to be switched out to a different ROM or it's the emulator that needs to be switched and everything worked fine. Yeah. Um, again, you know, every RetroPie image is different. You know, we're going to run into, you know, different things. Um, I can't remember if there was one specific issue with the Pi 3B Plus that I've, I've really seen it. I mean, the only thing I could think of was, you know, people have a tendency to recommend bad SD cards. That was oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Save the $10, man. It ain't worth it. Yeah. And even um, to mention, too, I sent a uh, Pi 3B Plus and an image to a friend of mine. And he gets it, plugs it up, and he's like, oh, my God, this thing's amazing. He's like, why are you using the fours? And, you know, obviously the benefits, and I had to, you know, kind of explain that to him. But even the 3B Plus, going back that far, I don't recall going from the, the Pi 3 to the 3B Plus having any issues or really any road humps. I mean, everything seemed to be perfect and beautiful. You know, it just it, it seemed now with the four as things have progressed, you know, and I think at the end of the day too, having so many different versions of it has just, you know, kind of thrown a curveball, you know, cause obviously with the programs, the scripts and, you know, things like that, then again, the, the image, you know, makers, and there's so many different variables that are happening with the four that I don't think were happening with the three B plus, at least I don't recall. Yeah. My only issue with the three B plus is Ninja baseball. Batman is pretty laggy, but other than that, everything's great. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I can't. The only issue I had with the 3B Plus is because I came in around March, April of 2018, and it was that convergence of trying to find the right image that would work for the 3B Plus after converting from the regular 3B. That was a um, that was a very difficult time because there was you you barely had any image makers making anything yet for the 3B Plus, and I was trying to figure it out. I was downloading stuff, or whatever, and the first image I had worked for me was a Supreme image. It was a supreme base bill, 
So I, I've seen a number of images and bills, even in the past, uh, offered by other image makers where it either didn't work or something was going on with it, and I just didn't like it too well. Hmm. Well, I still can't wait to make a uh, cocktail image on the four, which I've been <laughs> trying that for a year and a half, and I have a three B plus image that is it's perfect, it's beautiful, everything is you know perfectly split. But the four, I've tried everything from all different type of coding to you name it and yeah i can only get it to go vertical <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean it, yeah it's definitely a full hobby and stuff and uh, we wanted to just uh, bring light to everybody letting them know what goes on behind the scenes because it's a lot of work you know yeah. it's it's very uh it's, it's a lot of work and you know i just think you know again with several other conversations and issues i've been dealing with in the past couple of weeks uh, anytime a seller is selling anything, whether they be on Amazon, eBay, or whatever, it, at least a disclaimer to let people know that, hey, not every front end is made equally. Uh, there may be issues. This may or may not work. So either buy at your own risk. Uh, I just think that there should be some type of additional support system based on that or at least some type of mutual understanding. Yeah, your choices are buy from Amazon or just and just return it if it doesn't work. But there's just no support to say, hey, what can I do to get through this? Yeah, you're right. And yeah. the funny thing is, it you know, like on the the Amazon on the seller's page, um, you know, it shows on there. Please check the directions. You know, there's a QR code for you to scan. And you know, even thinking on my end, I, I tend to be a little more savvy than the average bear. And even going through that thinking, okay, maybe it's, you know, some type of a firmware update or something. But I thought it was funny because even on the instructions, it um, tells you on there, oh, this will work with any Pi image. And the minute that I saw that, I laughed and I'm like, oh, that's interesting because there's hundreds of image makers out there and everybody codes a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. In fact, actually, this is, uh, if you guys didn't notice it or not, this is one of the reasons why a lot of image makers and devs have fallen off the scene. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be frustrating. You have to well, be, well, finger pointed at you and things like that when things go wrong. Well, yeah, because you have somebody that releases something for free. And I get, you know, that things should work as they are intended, but with all the additional variables and then people buying accessories, uh, you know, it's... It's like being married to something. You didn't make any money for it. You, were, you know, you did your best. You spent hours. Like I could tell you, Wolfano said he spent 10 to 11 months on that Retromania image. And then oh, wow. somebody plugs something in and says, hey, it's broken or doesn't work. They didn't make any money. You know, they just yeah. did this for free. And then it's now it's like uh, they've turned into customer service. And they, they're, they're, you know, people are willing to answer, you know, some basic stuff, but not to have that additional attachment, especially where, other third-party dealers aren't taking responsibility for some of their parts or assisting people. That's where it really, really hurts. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I mean, especially, you know, when, when you're creating these images, I, I mean, I'll tell you on this last one that I made, I mean, I was literally just grinding for five days, you know, like it seemed like day and night, but making this image. And then even when you come across the smallest little issue, you know, it, it, it becomes more frustrating than anything because then you want to backtrack and you want to find the problem and you want to figure out what you can do to fix it. And it, it definitely I, I can see it, you know, getting to that point as well, because I've, I've had to deal with it myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's it's very frustrating, but I can tell you a lot of image makers have uh, said they're either quitting, retired, whatever the case might be. Certain things don't come out because it's uh, just turns into full fledged customer service for something you're just, you know, fun. Hey, hey, here, you know, here, guys, there you go. And then, you know, people ask questions about something, but you don't have that extra back end support from some of these companies. And then what happens is, you know, I've said it before, a lot of these in individuals in the community don't get these products. You know, they'll see it go to a another channel or something who, you know, they have a big following. Uh, but they are, they're not image makers. They're not devs. They don't provide anything directly to the community. And uh, these people that are putting in a lot of the work or most of the work are, you know, you ask them, like, hey, how come this trackball doesn't work with your image? And they're like, well, I don't know. I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I know one of the issues right now is like light guns. You know, light guns right now is the biggest thing. And uh, people don't have the hardware to really give you a yes or no answer. But some of these people aren't image makers, aren't pie devs. Um, 
and you know they're asked questions day or night about something they released, and they can't you know fully assist in some cases. Yeah, and the light guns too. I mean, just to throw out, I mean, those things, um, even on a PC, you know, they're 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 tough to install, you know. And luckily, um, I built my first arcade 20 years ago, and I got the EMS Top Gun. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Keo, but um, those things, and I love them, but they don't make them anymore. But even setting those up, man, you talk about a headache. And, you know, when you, you go from even PC to Pi, that Pi is, of course, going to be a little bit more tedious to set up, um, seeing all the different guns that are hitting the market. And I see, obviously, um, you know, things that you post with your Pistolero images and then the revised one. And uh, I mean, man, to, to see what people go through just to get the guns to work, it, it's amazing. You know, it's it's definitely a lot to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I could tell you with the Gun 4 IR and the AE light gun, that was easy. That was really, I mean, I'm not, it, it was easy. I mean, compared to doing some of the other things, you know, I didn't have to make another image. And then, of course, it didn't take Retro Lizard uh, days or, or hours. Uh, I know you said it probably took him a couple hours or so to get everything pre-programmed, but it was nothing like some of the other accessories out there. Um, if, even another accessory right now that comes to mind, uh, the 8 bit Dell controller, uh, using that with yeah. RetroPie if you're using the Nespy case. Uh, there's another issue for that because as far as Bluetooth connectivity. So as again, you see you have other things integrating with this and uh, that you know it takes up a lot of time. But again, with uh, in regards to light guns, yeah, I mean, it's not as easy as it looks because there's so many different settings in there yeah let's see david gum that's why i pay you guys too much that's why i oh, I'll pay you guys just too much stuff to deal with on my own yeah definitely understandable i mean we um you know feel your frustration out there but you know i wish there was a way some of these companies could be held a, a little bit more accountable for some of the things that they're selling i mean i'm sure they see it when they have to resell stuff that's brand new but if that's the case too if they're selling a lot of this stuff that's not working and you know we have to return it obviously we know they're reselling it so chances are you're probably getting something now you have a bigger percentage rate of something being uh defective because it's been handled before, it's going through shipping. So now, you know, especially if you're dealing with encoder boards or other electronic devices, you now have things that are probably more subject to electronic uh, electrical discharge and uh, being damaged for even the next person. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I still think I got some of Greg's encoders that he had. Right. <laughs> I think every turn and you got them. <laughs> They're like, we'll ship them to Houston. <laughs> I think I returned 12 whole four player kits and a bunch of two player kits too. I had a lot, a lot of trouble, man. How much money do you think that was in total? I don't know. I get it all back. Uh, over a thousand, probably 1200 bucks. Jesus. That's, a, oh, lot. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. a lot of money. And the, the downfall to that too is just the time that oh, is yeah. devoted to, to finding the problem and then, you know, having to send it back and wait for more. And I, and the hardest part, too, is now luckily, and I'm, and I'm sure, Greg, your customers have been very similar to mine. I mean, you know, they all understand that we are small business, mom and pop owned. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they understand that obviously at the end of the day, if there is a problem, it's not our fault. Um, you know, and that's been a uh, I say a gift, you know, it's really uh, been a heaven sent. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, explaining to them, hey, look, I got a bad batch of encoders or I got a bad batch of pies or I mean, even with SD yeah. cards, you know, and all I use even on the, the SD cards is Samsung, you know, and Me too. It, you're yeah, yep. you're, you're going to come across some that are bad. But, it, you know, I mean, as I say that I'm looking down, I have like four or five Samsungs here that are bad that just tend to uh, kind of gather and hang out on my computer after I find out they're dead. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I returned a batch of five of them a couple of weeks ago, but it's not common. But I had a good batch of them that one week where I just get replacements. Um, I forget what I was going to say. Never mind, take over. Yeah, I made a uh, YouTube video. I think it was the end of 2018. It was about SD cards. And I watched some other tutorials, and I thought 
because I was still kind of new to RetroPie, I was I'm very familiar with technology and how it works, but I thought RetroPie was different. So I watched several videos and I thought the ones that they recommended were good for RetroPie. However, keep in mind I have GoPros, I have drones. I was always familiar with that. I always got the best SD cards because I remember when they first came out, uh, you could tell the difference with quality for digital cameras. When they first came out, started using SD cards, you had some that could take a picture really fast and some that were really slow. And when they first came out, we were wondering, like, well, man, why do some SD cards cost $80 and then some cost 20 And they were like some, let's yeah. say, maybe 32 gigs or 16 megabytes at that time. And they come to find out you had those speeds and different qualities. And so I already had that understanding and that knowledge of how SD cards work. So when I watched a lot of these videos and people were recommending these cheap cards and I started noticing some of them would fail after about four or five times. I'm not talking about writing anything because when you put it in the pie, all it would do is read. I didn't write or do anything to it. It would just read. And so after five or six uses, some of these cards would just absolutely fail. Mm hmm. And I had never seen that before with any other kind of device. And so I was like, wait a minute, why are these guys consistently showing these you know, specific memory cards and showing these Amazon links for some of the cheapest stuff? So, yeah, that's why I've always stuck with Samsung and some of the other brands because uh, it's a higher quality. you got to spend the money. And well, If you uh, don't you spend the money up front, you'll spend the money fixing it. So uh, it's better to do it right the first time. Yeah. But, you know, it just appalled me at the time that people would recommend, you know, cheap stuff to yeah. something where it would just fail. I mean, I'm not in the business to just buy stuff just to have it fail a couple months later or just after a, f a few reads. Again, we're right. not talking about constantly reading and writing and deleting. We're just talking about I just I've never seen anything like that happen with a piece of technology. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I went through that with SanDisk. And I, I say maybe a year or two ago, because it, it kind of fell into about the same time of when uh, China took over Hong Kong, because Sandisk used to be in Hong Kong, and now they're in mainland China. And I started noticing even the quality on Sandisk started going down. And, you know, that's what made me actually switch over to Samsung, because I just started having so many problems, that being, you know, the cards freezing up um e even failing after a certain period of time and in that period of time may have been four to six weeks you know i mean it was relatively quick but i know there's people out there that love sandisk i mean they'll tell you all day long it's the greatest card out there no, and after I going through that, that i said uh, no more i was like i don't no. even want to look at them no they failed after a couple months so it was pretty sporadic maybe 20 percent of them had problems but that was enough for me Uh, we got a question here or a comment. Uh, I have send in light guns, but I have a lot of luck using the Weave more as a light gun. Uh, yeah, you Hope, do you have, are you using it on PC or Pi? Yeah, and then also, too, I've never had a problem improperly shutting down my Pi with the SD card. I mean, I've when I'm using a Samsung or a high end SD card, I've just, I've, I mean, I shut my pie off all the time automatically. I never shut it down correctly. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Funny <laughs> thing I... is, as you say that, I, I live right by an airport. So the Intercontinental Airport in Houston. And there's times that we lose power, you get little surges here and there. And as you say that, I'm thinking my cocktail table has a 3B plus in it with a Samsung card. And it's the old orange and white cards, if you remember those. And yeah, then... Yeah. My Street Fighter cabinet, I've got, I think that's the red and white one. So the one that came after the orange one. And, I mean, those things are still rocking and rolling like a champ. No problems, no issues, no nothing. Right. Oh, man, don't say it. Don't say they don't make it like they used to. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say that. Because, hey, I mean, even I'll throw this at you. Because even for me, I've got these new Samsungs, and I'm loving them. So, yeah, oh, nice. they're, they're equivalent. <laughs> Uh, we're getting old <laughs> <laughs> by far. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to, and I saw it uh, about a year ago on the uh, Best Buy website. Uh, they mentioned it, degradation. <clears throat> a lot of cheaper memory cards, they don't tell you that, but uh, after a while, they'll just get bad and um, they'll just, you know, go faulty. But you'll see that if you buy one of those memory cards for um, specifically made for Sony or one of those high end you know, cameras uh, with some of these SD cards that cost between 150 to 250 dollars. It has on there. It'll tell you like the cheaper memory cards will suffer from degradation, so it does happen. 
Oh, well, sure. it, it makes me laugh when I see people that'll say, yeah, I just bought this 512, you know, for 30 bucks. And I'm like, like okay, that's oh, going to last shit. you like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the bathroom, come back, it's already shot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Some people, they look at the price instead of what the product is, and they think they're both the same. The number's lower. Let's go with that one. And you, as you see on the screen, you do get what you pay for. I, I strongly believe in that. And especially when you're dealing with this aspect, you know, whether it be three quarter cabinets, full size pedestals, no matter what it is, you don't ever want to go cheap, you know, with anything for retro gaming. Because at the end of the day, you know, even if you have a card that has 10,000 games on it, you know, you don't want to lose the all the data, all the scores, all the things that you've been building up. If it's you and your family, you know, you never want to go cheap with stuff like this. You know, you want stuff to last. You want it to be an experience, you know, for the next 10, 20 years. You know, so I, I've never been able to understand that. I mean, I've always spent a little bit more because at the end of the day, that's what's going to give you more enjoyment and less problems in the future. Yeah, it's an investment into the future, not just the next week. Uh, exactly. We're, we're playing on these people having these last for the, at least 10 years for them, 10, 20 years, maybe more. Well, that's that's the out people. of my mind arcade. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Out of my mind, RK says, I totally agree with you. Uh, I totally agree. You definitely get what you pay for when it comes to storage. It's definitely worth just spending the few extra bucks and getting better quality storage. Yeah, I mean, that goes with everything. The controls as well. Um, yeah. I, I tell the people that get the Suzo Hap controls once I install them, I said, this is going to outlast the body of your arcade. I guarantee you that. <laughs> the, the IL joysticks, they're just so high quality, and then the Suzo Hap buttons are pretty nice. Uh, the Chinese ones, I don't, I don't know how long they're going to be around. I, I've had some for a couple of years, but I mean, they're still there two years later. I don't know how long they're going to go. And to mention, even as you say that, you know, my, my full size that I built in 2000, I still have the same Suzo hat buttons and joysticks mm -hmm. in that, you know, 20 years later. And even my, my trackball, Suzo hat trackball, and I've oh, got... Yeah one cousin who's the manhandler right you know who always wants to roll the trackball like he wants to break it and luckily knock on wood as i say you know never even had a problem with that i mean this thing 20 years later it's still rocking and rolling on win xp <laughs> i believe it i believe it i mean it's it's worth the extra money i know it costs a lot more but it really is worth it that's true now can you guys think of any other accessories that uh have come to mind where you guys have seen either emulation station crash or uh, a device that has been troublesome in the community that's required a lot of customer service? Um, only the other problem I had was trying to use a spinner with a trackball. Um, for some reason, some of the pies just lose the programming and it goes mm -hmm. back to reading just one of the mouse controllers instead of having them. Um, as you, probably, you program each ROM for mouse one, mouse two, or mouse zero, mouse one, whichever one the spinner is in the trackball. Right. And somehow that gets mixed up over time. I, I'm not sure if it's the pies or what, but uh, that's the only issue I've ever had. Well, I'll make y'all laugh too. I, I got an iPad not too long ago that was actually bad, and I have never in 20 years seen a bad iPad that didn't work out of the box. Um, so <laughs> that was quite surprising. And, um, you know, other than that, I mean, it's been, you know, really just a trackball here or there, um, not too, too much. And then, you know, some LCD converter boards that I've seen bad, um, which, you know, that luckily to knock on wood, as I say, doesn't happen too often. But I, I've seen that happening lately, um, you know, which kind of surprises me when I start to see the iPads and the LCD converter boards kind of hitting those problems like that. Yeah, it makes you wonder, like just the chips shortage and uh, the just shipping problems and whatnot, how that domino affected everything else you know everybody's trying to rush to get caught up because this happened and that happened maybe they're trying to get it out too fast and there's no quality control so you're seeing it in a lot of different aspects of the market right now yeah i think it's lack of firmware up updates on them you know honestly because I, I think that as the chips are hitting the boards they may be flashing them and doing you know the bare minimum but not really going through the full process you know that needs to happen and that's that's the downside to it and you know, I mean, even again, when I saw that iPack that was bad, I mean, I was mind blown because I'm like, oh, my God, I've never seen a bad iPack. And I even went and bought four different power ports for it. <laughs> and none of that even helped. Yeah. Um, so I was, you gotta, you gotta I wonder, was like, 
the staffing issues and all those other issues. I mean, the staffing, maybe they're working short staffed as well. There's got to be so many different factors that are affecting all this because all of a sudden we're having all these different issues now. Right. Uh, here it is. Uh, Hope says a lot of Pi images don't work with the Zenmo, but it helps if the builder gives the recommendation for controller use. See, and, and that's another thing what I was talking about earlier. Uh, you know, when we make images or a builder makes a build, we don't have all these accessories. Nobody actually knows. In fact, uh, what was that? When I released Pistolero, now the, all the Supreme images from the Pi 3B all the way up until now, it still has the script in there for aim track. But aim track was made specifically, just using this as an example, uh, the aim track was made to work with the arcade ROM set using advanced main 1.4 and main for all. Those two emulators aren't there anymore. So um, I went to the website. You guys saw that video I posted several months ago. I looked it up because I was like, man, aim track needs to get on the ball. Everybody's asking me questions. You know, again, people were blaming me. Saying, Keo, I'm trying to hook up my aim track gun to pistol arrow. You got the script there, but it doesn't work. And I'm like, well, I don't know. First of all, I don't have the gun. So just to answer that question, uh, we don't have the hardware. Everybody doesn't have the hardware to check. There's so many, again, so many different variables. And a lot of times I've spent money, just personal money, not trying to buy it to, for enjoyment, but just testing. Like I have my LCD, 14-inch LCD monitor in a backpack right now because I've only <laughs> used it pr primarily for testing. But, um, yeah, even AimTrack, uh, keep in mind, uh, for Linux support, they don't support it. They don't support it whatsoever. That was made by a lady named Katie Snow, who is another hobbyist who made it to work for RetroPie. And, she, you know, you can get it to work for the Pi 4, but you got to understand what you're doing with it in terms of association. But again, that was a community driven uh, product that has nothing to do with Ultimark whatsoever. They never promised any type of Linux support. So it's impossible for an image maker or a builder to know or make recommendations when there's so many different variables and controllers out there don't have the hardware and a lot of these companies don't support it. But I appreciate Ultimark for putting that on their website saying we don't support Linux. This was something offered by the community. Uh, this is her name is Katie Snow and message her if you have any questions. <laughs> that, that's what that's what that's what's on their website. I ought to blame the guy that made the image. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but again, those are just you know variables that people don't know. I mean, and, and, and I don't know if you guys have watched some of my pre uh, previous videos where I said any company or anybody saying something works with Linux or works for RetroPie is still making a very vague statement because unless it's tested yeah. or in some cases with specific accessories, if it, which may require a specific emulator, you don't know. Yeah. You, 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 just, you just don't know. Saying something works for uh, Linux or RetroPie, uh, which could be disabled by the builder or the image maker or even RetroPie official, they could push an uh, update out and totally you know, uh, put something in there that will block that accessory is really risky. If most of you guys didn't know that, they could push out an update that would remove either certain emulators or the functionality of a device, have it blocked, and you won't be able to use it. Yeah, if you're tapping into the internet. Yeah. So. But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of RetroPie for you. Is everything is community based? I mean, it's very risky to say that there that something is supported unless you physically test it. You know, like a, a lot of things, like when I make recommendations on drives to use it with my image, that's because I have those. I can't recommend something else because uh, I haven't, you know, fully tested it. You may run into issues. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't sell anything that I haven't tested myself. So that's why I no longer do the two two player control panels with trackballs and spinners because it, it fails over time somehow. Um, once I realized there was an issue, I just stopped making them. Funny enough, as you say that to the pedestals that we make and sell, I mean, those things are huge and I get requests all the time for spinners. And, you know, I tell people I will never do a spinner and a trackball together, especially with a four player setup. 
you know, I, <laughs> yeah. And when you start getting into that and, you know, it, it'll, it may work that first time that I boot everything up and get everything uh -huh. running. But even then after that, each time you, you boot it back up, I mean, I've seen the spinners, like you said, you know, change from mouse one to mouse two, the trackball go from mouse two to mouse three. It's, it's just too much. I mean, when you start adding those in and the pie thinking that you've got multi peripherals like that, it, it's a headache, you know, mm -hmm. and then throw in my Tron stick as well. So <laughs> there's way too much going on there, you know. Four players, trackball spinner, Tron stick. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, without the spinner, I'll tell you, man, it, it works perfect. <laughs> yeah, the spinner will cause problems, man. It's got to be one or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and my thing is, I tell people too, you got the trackball that goes left to right. It's the same thing as a spinner. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. It is. You just don't get the fun uh, twist of the wrist, but uh, you know. Actually, and since all three of us are here, are y'all familiar with the, or have y'all ever heard of um, the tornado spinner? Uh, tornado sounds theory? sounds probably sounds familiar. I'd have to see a picture of it. So it was, um, I, I used to get these all the time and I, I don't know what happened to the company. I see they're being sold for outrageous amounts, um, but they were awesome spinners. I mean, they were uh, like the one that I have on my full size. I mean, I've had it for, you know, again, 20 years, um, which has been phenomenal. But yeah, I can't find anything that is close or comparable to that quality. Um, but they're amazing. I mean, you can just spin that thing and I mean, it keeps going you know it doesn't slow down it doesn't instantly stop like a lot of the spinners do but it's hard to find a good quality spinner now too compared to what it used to be which yeah. which company which company sold it i want to say it was like tornado terry it was something like that that's how i remember it i remember seeing it but never trying one yeah yeah i've never had um i've never heard of that brand um just, I mean, I can't really think of it, but was it one of the other arcade companies primarily selling it or did you buy it as a standalone? Yeah, so I actually got it as a, a standalone and I, I want to say that I bought it from Suzo Hap and I was buying it from them for a long period. Um, and then I, I found not too long ago, I say maybe a month, four to six weeks, um, I found, I guess, a website that was selling them. And I mean, literally, they were like four or five hundred dollars. And I'm like, there's no way that the spinner is going for that much now, um, unless it's just old stock and maybe they're no longer around. But yeah, it was it's called a tornado spinner. I mean, if you get a chance, check it out. I mean, those things are amazing. And I love mine. I never use it. So it still looks brand new. <laughs> is I it just a USB plug in? Yeah, you got it. I use Ultimark, but I think you have as well. You've tried them. We talked about it one time, getting it set up. Yeah, those ones are nice. I mean, Glens are great too. Yeah, it's Glens great. are good. I, I like all the Glens the products. Those are amazing. Yeah, yeah. And the and cool thing about some of Glen stuff is you can pick it up at Micro Center now. Yeah, yeah. I love seeing that. <laughs> Funny thing is, when I saw the Tron sticks there, and I say the uh, I saw the name of the I don't even know how to say it, Bale Lynn, ba Bale Leon, whatever, and I'm like, this is Glens. This shows Glen on you yeah. know his name and everything on the box. It's funny to think back when we first started doing this. I mean, what was it? Early 2019. And, you know, Glenn's got 3,000 followers. Retro Wild has 4,000 followers. And I jump in there. You know, the, the Facebook's groups have like three, 4,000 people in them. Now look where we are. Uh, yeah. You got 20,000 here. This guy's got 40,000 followers. It's, it's just blown up so much. You got Glenn in stores. Uh, right. man, it's been great. It's been great watching everybody grow. Oh, yeah. And there's this upgrade, upgrade arcade guy. You guys heard of him? Who? Oh, I hear, I hear he's a nice <laughs> Italian guy. <laughs> oh, well, I'm greater. <laughs> um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, uh, do you guys know offhand which accessories that? Oh, shoot, uh, not XRK. What's the name of that com company? Um, the one that just recently went out of business. Oh, Rec Room. Rec yeah, Room yeah, Rec Room. yeah. What accessories oh. did they use for their? Uh, pies and PCs. I have no idea. I never had anything from there. I was gonna say I, the only thing I, I heard was that the like the PCs that they were using, and I believe was an i3 or an i5. But um, outside of that, they were very quiet on the end. And I guess kind of similar to how me and Greg are too. Like you go to the website, you really don't see much except for the fact you get like an SD card <laughs> with games. <laughs> but I've wondered the same thing because I know that they they did really well. 
Um, and unfortunately, you know, when they, they closed down, I was kind of, you know, shocked by that because I know that a lot of people, you know, bought from them, but I never could find out really much more outside of the I3 or I5. Hmm. Right. Costs have gone up quite a bit. I mean, I know they had part of it to do with them going down, but, um, you know, one of the pies go up $45 recently. Uh, that's for the pie, uh, the two gigabyte model. It went uh, back the to course. the original cost of $45. No, I, they've gone up $45. You know, the kits are going up $5, $10. There's a little bit more cost on everything now. Yeah, you know, you, know, yeah, you guys got to be careful, too, about those kits. Because, like, Canna Kit and everybody else, they go up because they're third party. But if you go to Micro Center, the prices are still the same. Because uh, be uh, nice. Micro Center is a direct seller for the Raspberry Pi. But some of these other companies, maybe even Best Buy, um, they're not. Gotcha. I'm not sure if they're actual direct sellers, but I know there is a difference between Canakit Best Buy prices versus what I would typically get it at Micro Center. Um, mm. And I know Fry's, because I first started getting my Raspberry Pis on uh, on eBay and Amazon, and then when I first, and then I started getting them at Fry's, I noticed that they were about five to ten dollars cheaper. Yeah. So I think Fry's too was another direct reseller for the Raspberry Pi units. I miss those guys as well. <laughs> I don't know how you couldn't upcharge a little bit going through Amazon and that because, you know, they're taking 20% right off the top. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how there's any profit margin on any of those pies with people reselling them. I, I, I just don't see it. I don't. Well, even too, I, I looked around for some 3B pluses for a few kits uh, with vertical monitors. And I had to resort to Amazon and I try to avoid Amazon at all costs for, you know, just about anything and everything. Um, but I ended up spending $110 on each can of kit for the three B pluses. And man, that hurt. I was just like, Oh my God, all I want is two, three B pluses. Like I don't even need the power. I don't need the, the HDMIs, but it's been, you know, almost impossible to find because even the online retailers that I typically use, I mean, they've been sold out for three, four months. And then, when I go to Micro Center, the guys are like, yeah, you know, as soon as we get them in, they're sold out. And I'm like, oh, OK, yeah. so you're just selling all of them to the same guy then, huh? <laughs> well, you know, I got like five, I got five of them sitting in front of me right now. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> More than we have together. <laughs> so we know where uh, me and Greg are flying to here to come pay you a visit, Keo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah, I stay stocked up on stuff. I ain't sick of the snow yet, but when I am, I'm coming down there. Up there <laughs> sideways. Yeah. There. <laughs> yeah, that my, the micro center is really nice out here. Uh, I'd love it, to see one. It's it's well, this is the flagship store, so this one oh, won't look yeah. like any other, you know, uh, micro centers. But you know, I thought I would do a separate video on this, but since I have you guys on, I'll talk about my experience. So sure. um, while I was there, I met uh, obviously I met Andy. There's there's another Andy. He is the direct guy over the retro gaming section. Uh, for a micro center. Um, and then, of course, I met one of the reps for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Yeah. And so when I was there, he asked me, he was like, Keo, so if I tell you that uh, a Raspberry Pi 5 might be coming out in a few months, you know, what do you expect to see from it? Problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, and I, I didn't really get into a technical answer. I just said that, you know, I, I would wish that a lot of people who are in the community that make things happen, that supply the community with stuff, would get those devices first. You know, and I told them my story. I said, I came down here, bought a bunch of pies, mailed them off to where they needed to go, and we had RetroPie working, you know, in a few days, uh, versus the official team had it working eight months later. <laughs> You know, so, you know, I'm not the kind of person that sits on my thumbs. I like to get things done, you know, and if it wasn't for shipping and then, of course, uh, you know, them, you know, the, you know, stocking issues, you know, it would have been a lot faster than what it than actually was. But no, we had RetroPie booting up about two, about a week or two later, mm -hmm. you know, you know, from, you know, that turnaround time. And I told him, I said, look, I know that affects you guys' bottom dollar. You know, regardless of whatever the case might be, because people see it working and then they want to start buying some additional devices. But, you know, I just think that there's you have a, a segment of people that help provide direct support or provide things to the community. Then you have guys that only do open boxing, talk about it. And then they'll say, well, RetroPie ain't working yet. Well, that that, that doesn't help anybody, you know, so. But, uh, yeah, they actually love the hobby and who's just 
making noise. Yeah. So that's what they asked me about the Raspberry Pi 5. And then from my understanding, too, uh, you may be able to use additional PC applications and not just Linux. So that gives you some additional mm -hmm. options there, too. Um, but um, I did talk to the rep for Micro Center talking about retro gaming, and I told them they were a powerhouse. And if these other companies don't get it together, they are in some serious trouble because he told me all the things that they want to do. He didn't want to make an official announcement because they can't promise some things. But, you know, we were on the same page and it was cool to talk to somebody who's like myself, who is a tinkerer, who does, who they understand Micro Center. And like when I make videos and people say, hey, come buy this. I'm like, why? You know, you got other devices out there that you can use that help simplify your life. So it was really nice to be able to talk to somebody who understood certain things the way that I do in terms of retro gaming. These aren't just what you would call nerdy retro guys. These were guys who have tech backgrounds, who tinker, who understand how different things integrate because you have to understand how everything works in the store. And so, uh, but they are a force to be reckoned with if they continue to go in the right direction. We talked about a lot of things. Uh, you've seen it on my channel. I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but I can tell you that you have seen some things on my channel and they're kind of going in that direction. And if these other companies aren't careful, uh, they're going to be on the outside looking in. <laughs> they have a lot of good things coming their way. Good, good. Some people need the competition. You know, if there's no competition, you just kind of slack off and fall asleep at the wheel. Yeah. Well, I would I would tell you if they go in the direction that we discuss, I would there won't be any competition. Ah. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> there, there won't be there, if they go in the direction that we kind of talked about and you know, he asked me about some devices. I was like, Keo, what's your you know take on this? And I was like, Oh my god. I was like, if you go in that direction, there's gonna be a lot of people upset. You know, hmm. because, you know, for comp competitive reasons. So, I don't know if I should share it. You know, spill the beans or anything. Again, this was something we were talking about, but it's cool to talk to like-minded people like that that see some of the other things that I've addressed here on my channel. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. Out of my mind, arcade. I love to see one of my. Uh, let me see here. Myself never been. We have nothing like that at all where I live, at least not within 75 to 100 miles. Best Buy is as good oh. as it gets unless I want to take a drive. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I'd love to see a micro center. You would have loved yeah. fries. <laughs> True. I wonder if they still have it in Canada. I live across the street from Canada. Well, if they have a fries, you will get lost for a couple hours just wandering through there. I mean, they had so much stuff. That, I mean, it was insane. Like anything you wanted from LEDs to, oh, my God, food, videos, fake right. cologne, <laughs> you know, accessories. I mean, it was yep. insane. I mean, you literally you could go in there, buy a computer, um, buy some videos, buy a, a washer and dryer. I mean, it, it was insane. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, Best Buy is the best I got around here. Kind oh, definitely. Definitely. All right, guys, uh, I think that probably wraps up our show. I'm sure these guys want to get in the bed because it's a little bit later where they are. <laughs> but uh, yeah. any of you guys want to say anything in closing, want to advertise what you guys are doing? No, nah, man, this is your spot. I'm not going to try and do that. I just appreciate oh, being good. with people that are into the hobby like I am and the people that are watching, the people that are on the show. It's just great to be with you guys. Oh, thank you. I definitely appreciate it. And likewise. Uh, so yeah, and I was just going to say, you know, me and Greg, we, we've got a, a what I feel like is a great relationship. You know, uh, if, if there's anything I need or he needs, you know, we, we definitely talk through things and issues. So outside of that, I mean, as well, Keo, you know, I, I've followed you for quite a while, you know, so to, to be able to be on here with both of you guys is awesome. Um, you know, as always, I, I try to be involved with as much as I can. So definitely enjoyed the time, you know, would love to do it anytime. And uh, Greg, as always, man, you ever need anything, you know where to find me at for the most part, you know. <laughs> but, of course, man. Yeah, I definitely there. enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm glad we got to come on here. So uh, it yeah, was, it was cool, Keo. Thank you. Yeah, good time. Yeah. And good information. Yeah, I definitely wanted to have you guys on because you are obviously in the trenches and you, you see what other people deal with what's going on in the community but i i hope it gets better and not worse 
you know, with third party aftermarket sellers, you know, selling stuff, uh, advertising it is compatible with, and particularly, you know, obviously I'm sure there's issues with PC too, but predominantly RetroPie, they provide no customer service or support and expect the community to do it for them. <laughs> And we definitely, I think between the three of us, <laughs> we probably do a majority of that, you know? Yeah, a lot. Uh, just because we care. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I like to just tag Greg and bring him into stuff anyway, just to <laughs> have some fun and be like, hey, you're joining me here. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, guys, you guys all have a good night. Um, catch you guys next time. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And uh, make sure you share this video in your prospective retro gaming groups because we feel that this is some information that needs to get out. You know, when I make a video, I like it to be wholesome and educational because there's some well-needed material you need to hear because you guys see these questions every day. Somebody's probably on right now saying my stuff doesn't work with this. How do I make it to work? And the company is nowhere around to answer <laughs> or do their own uh, yeah. justice to answer it themselves for so. sure all right peeps you guys all have a good night we will catch you guys later take thanks care. take care guys all right